Hey friends, it's pizza time again. Today in this video, I am going to walk you through how to make one of my all time favorite pizzas that I have ever made on Thursday night pizza, bacon apple cheddar pizza with a maple syrup drizzle. Yes, it is that good and I cannot wait to get started. All right, so first you wanna preheat your oven, of course, and you wanna have your dough ball ready at room temperature. My dough ball's back there. My oven is preheated to 550 because I have a, a steel plate in there. If you're using a baking sheet, remember you wanna preheat your oven to about 500 degrees. You don't have to preheat the baking sheet, just have it ready. What you need for this pizza is half a pound of sliced bacon cut into about half inch slices. You know, you want them to be like little chunks for the pizza, so it's all bite-sized. You want a tablespoon of fresh thyme, a heaping cup of shredded cheddar cheese, and this is shredded by hand. Do not buy the pre-shredded stuff because it will not melt the same way. One red, one green apple. You're only gonna use half of each, so either snack on it while you make your pizza or save it in the fridge, save the rest in the fridge for later. And of course, some maple syrup and you're ready. First thing I'm gonna do now that my oven is preheating, my dough is ready, I'm gonna cook the bacon right away. So you wanna heat up a skillet and get that going while you prep the other ingredients. So let's get that on there. And you'll hear that in the background sizzling. All right, so for the apples, you wanna cut them. Those we'll put aside because we're not gonna use half of them. Okay. All right. Cut out the core and then slice them into very thin slices. that sizzle. You want to make sure your bacon cooks so that it's just starting to brown at the edges of the pieces, but it's not crispy because remember that bacon is going on your pizza to then bake more in the oven and you don't want it to burn. And I'll show you what that looks like. Can you see it? Sizzle, sizzle. All right, then you want to put that bacon on a paper towel lined plate, let it drain a little bit, but make sure you keep the bacon grease in the skillet because you're gonna brush that gold onto your pizza dough before it bakes, or before you put on the rest of the toppings. Be careful. Right. Okay, and my bacon grease, maybe I'll pour that into a little. Then you're ready to stretch or roll out the dough and put on the toppings and get it in the oven. Remember, if you are using a steel or a stone, you wanna increase your oven to broil on high, which I have had probably going for about 10 minutes now. If you're using a baking sheet, there's no need for that step. All right, so I've got my dough here. This is my regular weeknight dough that I made a little bit ago. Got some flour. Some flour on your counter, not too much. Remember, you don't wanna to put too much flour on or the dough will get too dry. Okay, press it out. And you wanna roll or stretch it into whatever size pizza you want. I do a 12 to 14 inch for these recipes, but 
You can always break up the ingredients among two smaller pizzas or three or individual if you'd like. Baking times won't be much different. If you're using a pizza peel, dust it a little bit with flour, again, not too much, just enough to make sure it's not going to stick to the peel when you're trying to get that in the oven. Okay. Okay. Find my brush. All right, next, Brush the dough with that bacon grease. Oh, I know, it looks so good. It smells so good right now. Go for a light layer. Don't get too crazy with the bacon grease or it will get very greasy. You just want a very light sheen all the way over the pizza. Next, you're gonna put the bacon on. Oh, yeah. Evenly all over the pizza so that every bite has some bacony goodness in it. I think about half a pound of bacon works perfect for a 12 to 14 inch pizza. But I mean, I'm not gonna stop you if you wanna use a whole pound here. Pretty sure that will make some people very happy. And then put the apples on. I like to do a nice little pattern. You do not have to, you can just dump them on as long as they're in a single layer. That's important, otherwise they won't be quite as well. Finally, the cheese. Okay. All right, and then you're ready for the oven. If you want, you can put a little salt here. I kind of like to leave it because bacon is salty enough for me. Make sure it'll slide. Get every last piece of cheese on there and put it in the oven. So if you're doing a baking sheet, that's gonna be about, about 10 minutes. If you're working with baking stone or steel, about six to eight minutes should do it if you're broiling on high. You wanna double check that the crust all the way around is nice and golden. The cheese should spot a little bit. It should get like nice and charred and little spots all over the top. And then the bottom of the crust should be evenly browned. You can peek with your pizza peel, or you can peek with just an offset spatula if you're using a baking sheet. All right, I'll see you in about six to eight minutes. Oh my gosh, this is perfect. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. Can you see that? I'm gonna get closer too. All right. So you see it's perfectly brown. Look at those spots on top all over the cheese. And then the bottom, I'm not gonna touch it because it's super hot right now, but the crust is perfectly browned around the edges and on the bottom. Oh, it smells so good. We've got our finished pizza. I have some fresh thyme. Fun fact, thyme is my least favorite herb of all time, not because of the flavor, but just because of how much time it takes to strip it off each individual thing. So, if 
If I give you a recipe that has fresh thyme in it, it means that I truly, truly love you. <laughs> All right, so about a tablespoon of fresh thyme all over. I wish you could smell this right now. Hopefully you're making your own and you can smell it in your own kitchen. And then to finish, and I think what makes this super special is some just pure maple syrup. Not too much. I didn't leave a measurement here because you can use as much or as little as you want, but I'm just gonna do a little drizzle if it'll work. Oh yeah. Try and keep it even so that every bite of pizza has some maple syrup on it. This bite over there got a lot. I don't think they're gonna complain. Pretty sure my son will take that one. All right, and then there you go. You've got a delicious apple bacon cheddar maple pizza that you can enjoy year round. I mean, obviously it's great in fall and winter when you can get apples really easily and there are tons of them. And they're also one of the only fruits available in the colder months, um, at least near me. But I like this pizza year round. And it's also because of the maple, it also can be served for brunch if you're into that kind of thing. All right, let's slice this guy up. the perfect slice to show you. Let's see. This one. Okay. Look at that beauty. It's so good. It smells so good. All right, let's do this. Mmm. That is so good. Just the right amount of cheddar just the right amount of apple in every bite and just the perfect amount of bacon between the bacon grease on the crust underneath all the other toppings and the bacon, just the bacon on the pizza. I hope you love this one as much as I do. Um, yeah, enjoy. And let me know how it went when you make it yourself. Leave any comments, questions, requests, you know the deal. I cannot wait to keep making pizza with you.